All right, so now that we've got that, now we've lost our masking. So when we actually start clicking on this and moving it around or two for the move tool, that's this guy, bring that up. Now you'll see that it's very hard for us to sort of distinguish between these two modes. And you'll see that there's all these different colors. That's the same color as that one. And these two are the same and that one's a different color there. Well, these are polygroups and these are actually really handy. I'm just gonna give you a really basic introduction to these by showing you if we open this up a little bit wider. We've got this mask by polygroups, which is shift P. So if that is gone and click that and then just bring it all the way up to the top 100. And that just means every single polygroup will be an individual group. So now when we click on it, it's actually only working on that polygroup, as you can see, and it will not work on the other one. So we click on this one, it's only using that one. So this is a really handy way of sort of moving your objects around and separating them depending on what you're working on. So polygroups are a little bit like sets in a way. It's based on colors and you can do loads with polygroups with masking and things like that. So now that we've got this sort of just like a good way of organizing your objects without actually having to make separate objects. So it's like a sub object sort of set mode. So now that we've got that, we've got to bring on the symmetry mode again, so that's X. And now we can sort of start to move this guy around and flatten out that face and sort of bring it up to where it should be because in the front view, if we have a look at this, that top of the face there is quite flat and he's actually got a really big, nice smile on him. Now, a couple of things here, this brush, I sometimes I actually want it bigger than this. This is the maximum size of the brush. So if you find your model is too big, it's actually a scale thing. So I'm really pushing the scale here. This is the limit of the grid size in ZBrush. Sometimes you generally want your sort of heads or busts to be down about this size. So I just thought I'd bring that up because you, you do have a maximum size in ZBrush. There is no scale like in Maya. You want to keep everything sort of within this grid as much as possible, especially for characters. Now I just want to make this a little bit wider so we can sort of just grab it here because I know it's more the back back of the head. Let's bring that out a little bit and I'm just going to slowly bit by bit use it like the grab brush in, in my it's almost identical in that way. Smooth it out a little bit just to get a little bit of a flatter sort of looking head there. Now we can tweak this a lot because we've got this reference from the top let's just use it and we can really mask this and make it do some different things. Just using the grab only on that one object so as long as we click here we're not affecting the horns or the neck and we can get that roughly in the right place and then Move around to the side view and just check that that's okay now. More to match that front guy there. Now it can be a little bit hard to see now that we've got polygroups on. Turn those off and remember that Shift N and Alt N are our image plane sort of settings here. So these, these two guys here, they are Alt N and Shift N. So if we go Alt N, you can actually make this more transparent. And Shift N will show more or less of our object. So we can really show a lot of our object there if we wanted to do that to see how that silhouette's going. When we click on this guy, it should sort of take over to that polygroup there. And we're in a pretty good rough spot from the top view. I think the body needs to be a bit smaller. That's the front of the, the teeth. And we're, <laughs> we're in a good place. So if you get into this sort of a problem here, what I've done there is I've held shift. So this is something I haven't really shown much of. But if you hold shift to sort of navigate and then let go of shift, it's actually the spinny mode and then you hold shift again, you're actually doing that. So that's the way to actually put things diagonally is that to hold the shift, click and drag, like right click, click and drag and then release the shift. So that's just me getting back into place there. So uh, there we go. Now what we can do is we can sort of mark out roughly where this, this eye is by just doing that. And now just going Alt G. And now I'm just gonna move this down a little bit just so that we know that that's roughly where the eye is. So. We've got this sort of strange looking head and stuff at the moment, but totally we can do some things. And one of those is if you just hold the alt key on the move brush, we'll actually push it in. So that's just like making a little dimple and that will do it sort of from any angle. So if we held it here and then use the alt, it's doing it sort of from the normal, the geometry. So if we were to go front on and then hold the alt key and then push it, we're actually moving it the same way out. So that's holding the alt, that's really handy. In Maya, you can actually do that. I believe they're changing that to be a secondary function in Maya too. That's a really great one that ZBrush has always had. So with the horns, we can just shift click those because there are lots of polygons, remember? So we just shift smoothing that just like we would in Maya. And we're slowly getting 